Welcome back to Sunrise Daily. Well, we start today. Well, yes, it's something that's also going on in the country. Uh, we've got the Honorable Minister of Transport, uh, Ruti Miyamichi, joining us this morning as we take a look at matters happening in River State and beyond. Thank you for coming on this morning. Good morning. Well, they're preparing for elections and then um, 6,000, I think about that figure, uh, number of policemen, we understand, will be deployed to River State. Is that going to be, what kind of impact do you think that amount of police f members will achieve to ensure that peace reigns while the elections go on? Yeah, that's, a, that's objective. You, you've, you've watched or listened to the different activities in River State in the past eight months. And not even eight months, before the 2015 elections. And uh, what I have done as a minister of the Federal Republic is to keep away from River State politics. I've tried as much as possible not to get involved because I didn't run an election. Uh, Dr. Uh, Adol Dakuku Peter I ran the election, so it was his business. But it's getting to a point where people have been intimidated and lives are lost. And I thought that the responsibility of a governor is to protect lives and property. If you look at the oath of office, uh, that's, that, that's the definition. That's the only responsibility you have. And as a former Speaker of the Parliament, you, that is uh, that's the only offense that you can refer to as impeachable. Yes, there are, there are issues of corruption that you can also, but the most important uh, issue that is constitutional that you can refer to as impeachable offense is when the governor is not able to protect lives and properties. Now, I went to Omoko. I had to literally run away from Omoko when I got to Omoko. Why? When I visited the first family, they said, oh, you need to visit the second family. And in each of these, if, uh, the, 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 the first one I visited was the chairman of Ward 4 in Omoko, of APC. He was murdered. His wife, pregnant for five months, five months pregnancy, was murdered. Then his son was murdered. The second person they begged me to go, similar. He was murdered. His wife, who was pregnant, was murdered. Fortunately for the child, they didn't see him. So what the, uh, the guy's mother-in-law did was just came, came to Moku, took his, his uh, grandchild away, <laughs> not to stay there. So at that point, what, what, what do you say? But the police say that uh, they're looking into the matter. They, For how long? They cite cultism activities in those areas. Okay, so PDP cultists against APC members. Is it, what, is it what the police is saying? The commissioner of police, is it what he's saying? And why, why, why in the first place, whether they are cultists or not, I, I continue to say as a former governor that the reason why lawlessness survives is because you don't punish those who break the law. I went to three communities on, uh, what's today? Today is uh, Monday. I went to three communities on Saturday. Buguma, Abonima, and Omoku. They were all deserted. All. But then, the federal government controls the police force. So can we then say the federal government has failed in ensuring that peace reigns I, I, since, since they are in charge of the police force? I thought, you would know, I thought you would know that the responsibility of protecting lives and property in the state falls into the hands of the governor. But well, governors always tell us that, look, I don't control the police. You know, that's not true. They always tell that's us. That's not true, except where the government has a specific interest. And not this kind of government. President Buhari has left everything to the rule of law. It was under the former president that you can say what happened to me in particular, that they took away the police, they took away the army, and the citizens were helpless, as just as government was helpless. The elections were planned with the police, the army, and everything. If you listen to PDP screaming, they've forgotten that by this time, in, in May, I mean, in 2015 election, all APC leadership were in prison. The ones that were not in prison were on the run. But now, because of the fear of the rule of law by President Buhari, nobody's under it. Nobody's in detention. Nobody, whether PDP or APC. Mm. It's interesting that you link the killings uh, or the you know, crisis in those three communities to political violence uh, when the police have said that this is, you know, it was in a cult clash. Can you, can you really say that you're vouching for the members of your party that none of them is a cultist? I, I wish you know me very well. I hate violence. One thing I fear about life is that you see the placeable. So if one thing you must do if you follow me is that you must not own a gun, you must not own machete except for purposes of agriculture, neither must you own any knife. So you can't work with me, work with me and carry a weapon. Is, are they saying that when I was governor, when our people were being killed, don't forget over 100 persons were killed in the 2015 election, and we named them. There's a book written now on that. We named them, read, wrote their families and their locations. Now, are you saying that as governor, I couldn't have brought up money to get my people to buy weapons? 
I'm, 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 that doesn't, that, 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 that I mean, doesn't quite answer the question. No, it does. Why, what in the you, sense that what I'm saying is, are you saying, I mean, yes, you can say that those who follow you directly maybe do not carry weapons, but are you saying that every single member of your party, you know, none of them is a cultist? Those who follow me directly carry weapons. Those are my security. Mm -hmm. But if you talk about followership in terms of politics, yes. You, one qualification you have is you must be God-fearing. You have no business being with me if you don't fear God. Yeah, you must be God-fearing to be in the APC. You must be God-fearing to be in the APC. So are you saying there are no bad eggs within the APC? Uh, only your God-fearing will, will be a bad egg. All members of the APC are God-fearing in River State. Oh, of course I say that. You must be God-fearing. If you're not God-fearing, being God-fearing does not mean you won't commit sin. Don't forget that. But being God-fearing means that you have a limit for which you can do things. L like, for instance, you know the consequences of death. Mm. I'm just wondering, it's right, I'm looking at the rhetoric, because if you look at what's been happening, I think it was also somebody who commented on it uh, yesterday on the back page of The Guardian. His name is Debo Additional. I don't know if you read that particular column. He was talking about how the rhetoric in River State has become so heated that it is not allowed even within political space that two leaders or two people who are supposed to be leaders you know speak the way they do he pointed to the fact that uh, you t accused the current governor of the state uh, you said you said that uh, he will sell his own mother you are quoted as having said that and the, the current governor was also uh, said to have said you have no parental home training and that's the kind of you know conversation that seems to be going on between the two primary leaders of political parties within that particular state and it's overheating the polity do you think that both your comments have helped I will take you back to where I said from this conversation. I told you, I said, I kept away from reverse politics to allow the actors to play out there. I've done my eight years. For Christ's sake, there's nothing new I can offer. Even if I have, I, I think there are others who can offer that. Now, I have kept away, and one man has consistently come on stage. I will kill. Don't forget he said that. Don't forget he said, if anybody comes, let him write his will. What is will? It means you're expecting death. If I meet any investor for that lecturer, what does he mean by that? Consistently, and he's a governor. But what Eight years done? of my governorship, I never said that. What, what have you done to tone down that rhetoric? Because no, you can't tone it down. You can't, because he's the person that's saying that. You can't. He, he thrives in violence. You say that your former chief of staff thrives in violence. He does. Does that say something about the kind of relationship no, no, you had? No, it doesn't. Why it doesn't that? I had him under control. I had him under control. I was the governor, he was chief of staff. Now, when, when he became a governor, when he became a minister first in the hands of a president who supported everything, anything to be, to be, to be, to be, to be, to be returned as a president, then you, you saw the true color of the person he was. M M Mr. Major, you know, a chief of staff, I, I think that we've had cause to look into the role of a chief of staff on this program. I think it was when the president appointed uh, two uh, northerners you know, to be his chief of staff and secretary to the government of the federation and he was severely criticized for that um, you know people try to justify it and say the chief of staff is not just anybody it's not just it has to be somebody who's really really close to you it has to be somebody who can enter your bathroom for instance you know to give you information without any you know Hindrance. any hindrances as it were that's how close a chief of staff is you're saying that you knew that your chief of staff was like that and yet he was that close to you by the time i knew who he was i had already appointed my chief of staff so what i had to do was to manage manage him and i did you can ask anybody in fact I, the things i heard he did behind me if i had it as a governor i would have removed him as a chief of staff did your relationship turn sour yeah, exactly you in, heard it was violent was exactly. that why it, turned sour? it was sour for reasons of corruption for reasons of uh, uh, violence and all that. I had to barely manage him. There is a ch our chairman of party, Chief Ake, was always on me. Say, manage him. They must not know that there is a disagreement in government. And everybody knew that I was just managing him. Mm. 